What's going on, everybody? Recruiting news. We got John Garcia back on the show to discuss the latest commits, as well as some quarterback news coming down the pike. All that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am your host, Ryan Herrings. As always, thank you for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. Free and available on YouTube, on podcasts, wherever you get it, wherever you want it. We are there, and we really appreciate you all as we build this kind of Badger community. Um, also, thank you uh, to Bet Online for helping to bring this show to everybody. Bet Online has you covered this year with more props, more action, more betting information than anywhere else on, on the internet. Um, I promise John Garcia we're going to bring him on. We have a big show today talking about the latest two commitments, and we're going to get into uh, some of the quarterback news as well. So John Garcia joins us, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director. Um, John, I want to jump into uh, Jacquez Keys. We, we talked about him a little bit on a previous show, but we didn't get too yeah. in-depth on him. Uh, he committed to the Badgers. Off the jump, You know, how, what does that commitment do for this Badgers class, and what kind of player is he? It's one that you're just almost not surprised to see uh, come in, right? Big physical downhill type of running back. Just some of the traits that you would associate with the Wisconsin Badgers anyway. Uh, so those fits always uh, make for great conversation. And, and look, that's so important when you're recruiting every position. Uh, but obviously when it, it's, I guess, the marquee one. I mean, would you say, Ryan, that's the marquee position right now for, for Whiskey? That's a great question. It, I, listen, it, it's going to vacillate between running back, offensive line, and outside linebacker at this point. Okay. You know, right? So when it's one of those, it just you, you're just like you almost overlook it because you just expect it to a degree. Uh, but but Keys has a lot of really nice traits. Uh, averaged you know over ten yards a carry last year, so he's got some dominant traits in his game, um, and, and he's he's one that. It's conventional, right? He's a first and second down back. We don't have a ton of information on his ability in space to be that shiftier uh, space threat, but that's okay, you know, because you still need that hammer, that downhill type, and, and I think he fits in so many ways and in that regard. Uh, so you love the fit at Wisconsin because, look, that's what we think of when we think of uh, the Badger running backs. We think of a physical team uh, that, that can really set the tone and possess the football, which is something that – you know, is is maybe undervalued in this day and age of college football where everybody wants to see points and uh, scoring and pushing the ball down the field. There's still something to be said for those uh, classic offenses that want to establish and set the tone, uh, and I think Keys helps you do that. He's he's kind of a first-person off the bus guy, right? The physique, yeah. the, the build. Like, he's that type of guy who's an intimidating presence on the field. Yeah, he'll, he'll probably play at 210, 215, once he gets to college, um, and he's got height to him too, right? Six foot six, one. Uh, so he's not just a, a stocky, small, compact running back. You know, he's got some height to him, uh, and I think that makes uh, his game that much more interesting because now you can utilize him a little bit more as a blocker. You can utilize him a little bit more uh, as an edge presence, maybe move him around more than you would a smaller running back who's kind of confined to one position. Uh, you could see him offsetting another back. You could see him offsetting the quarterback, um, even like an H back to a degree, depending on, on how you want to develop him there. So I do like a little bit more flexibility in his build uh, than just being kind of this bruising hammer style of running back. I do think he can afford you a little bit more uh, in terms of protection and, and even non running scenarios. You know, one of the things watching this film, I'm curious if, if you had this um, thought seeing him play. A lot of big backs, they're heavy on their feet, right? They kind of just fall floor, they plod. I thought his ability to get out of arm tackles, I thought his footwork was actually really good for a, a bigger back. Yeah, I was going to go into kind of the contact balance, right? I mean, that's something that if you're a running back, you are expected to make that first man miss by, by any means necessary. And a lot of times you're running through that contact, especially in a downhill type of scheme, which, you know, he plays in high school to a degree and he certainly will play uh, in college. Uh, so you need to be able to, you know, beat a defender to the point. And if you don't, you need to be able to make a move on him, whether it's through finesse or through physicality. And I think uh, his contact balance allows him to do that. Uh, I'd like to see him continue to work on staying low with that height we talked about, you know, playing on a lower plane for every running back is, is really important. That's why if you go to any practice, you'll see one of the first drills all running backs do is that kind of shed drill where they're underneath. Mm -hmm. 
looking to stay low. Uh, so for any taller back, that's something that you always have to work on. Uh, but it's also not the end of the world if you can't. I mean, like Derrick Henry runs straight up. Eric Dickerson used to run very kind of narrow uh, and, and straight up. Even Adrian Peterson, some of the best backs we've ever seen. Uh, so there is ways around it. But conventionally, you do want to see a, a you know, better uh, plane uh, usage. But the contact balance is there even without that to a degree. So I think that's a strong indicator earlier in his development as well. This is a back that's, that's rated kind of in that mid three star, upper three star range. Is it the long speed, the kind of explosive speed that probably takes him maybe, I don't want to say a tier below, but a tier below that four and five star back that we see? Yeah, he's not flashy, right? Keys is is a little old school uh, in nature. Uh, so certainly it, it, puts him in a box to a degree. I mean, I don't want to speak for the rest of the industry, um, but it also on the flip side gives him a higher floor because you kind of mm -hmm. know what you're going to get. So if he does expand that a little bit more as a senior and we do see a little bit more of his work in space, I think that could probably expand the perception around his game. But uh, in the past first nature, if you, you're not automatically assimilated into that from a height and weight and skill set standpoint, you are knocked for it, uh, for better or for worse in, in this industry. And yeah, there's not like blazing track times or anything associated with, with his game like that that could reverse uh, some of that box that, he, that he's put into, what, fairly or unfairly. But I mean, Wisconsin's done okay with some uh, lower rated backs in the past. So not something I'd worry about. And we've talked about it on this show with, with DBs in particular. Certain schools, you know, you trust their evaluation and, and right. you could you should allow that to become a part of your evaluation and another data point and how you potentially perceive a, a given recruit. Uh, so I, I think Keys will be safe with his ranking in terms of it not falling. So which means it's it's going to go nowhere but up over the next, uh, you know, seven, eight months before rankings are finalized. And let me ask you this, because I've always kind of been curious. Uh, Keys falls into this category, but it's not unique to him. Is it difficult to evaluate high school prospects that are more physically maxed out, right? Because there, there's players that are going to physically catch up to Keys at the college level. He's pretty maxed out with his build at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think he can carry you know another ten pounds at the max or so. But yeah, uh, that's another thing that again, you know, he's put into that bit of a box, right? So if you rank for four years down the road, mm -hmm. like twenty four seven ranks, uh, for example, where the NFL draft is really the focus. You're going to dock him for that. Now, if you're on our side and you value the floor a little bit more, we're ranking for, you know, the college level. That's something that doesn't hurt him as much. So it's really a truly subjective deal uh, in that regard uh, because it, we've seen success both ways, too. We've seen prospects who are physically close to being maxed out still go be great. Uh, at their school and and be all Americans and go high in the draft and all of that. Um, I talked about Derrick Henry earlier. Mm -hmm. He didn't get much bigger at Alabama, right? Uh, so it's it's not always the end of the world. Um, and I think if anything, it gives you a better uh, gauge of the floor of a recruit. Um, so if you value that, that's something you actually like about this commitment. I want to wrap up here on Keys, and we both kind of mentioned in previous shows with Keys and with other players, the Badgers being early on their board, not really worrying about offer lists. Keys is now an example of a guy who's starting to blow up. Just yesterday had a Michigan offer, right? And I think more to come. I know it just happened. Is there any sense from your perspective? I got to ask it. Um, you know, is Michigan a threat here? Or are other schools a threat here? Does this feel pretty solid to you? I know it's a very fluid situation as always in recruiting, but where are we at here with Keys? Yeah, it's interesting that he just committed and then he just got that Michigan offer right after. Look, I mean, it's, you know, it's a school selling something similar at the position um, with, with what Michigan wants to do in running the football. Um, same thing, you know, Iowa was in the mix before, you know, it's a similar situation. So I think having him already on board is, is big in that regard because on the front end, when you make a decision like that, you take a step back and you're relieved because you're done mm -hmm. in theory with the recruiting process. So I actually know a lot of staffs that will not offer a kid immediately after because they know there is a sense of finality with that recruit. Uh, now Michigan obviously didn't subscribe to that philosophy and they jumped right in with an offer. Um, and, and look, it's, it's a good time for Michigan, right? Coming off of a college football playoff appearance. So um, yeah, it's something to worry about to a degree if you're a Wisconsin fan, but until he, takes a visit, 
uh, going forward, things like that. That's really at the point where you should begin to to start to worry about how solid the the commitment is because it, it's still seven months till signing day. So it, it's always something to keep an eye on. But usually, uh, you should allow the visit to to push you towards that side of the aisle as opposed to just saying, "Oh, Michigan offered, so you know here we go. We're we're, we're chasing now, even though we just got this kid committed." Not that simple. Uh, I read one interview where he did talk about being kind of done with the process. Right. Uh, I think when you are when you are uh, casted as this type of player, um, first of all, you get tired of seeing it, and second of all, you know when you are done, you you kind of are through with the process. So I do think it's something that he should look into in general because look, it's. You only get to do this once, I guess, for mm-hmm. most players. Uh, so you you should you should want your commits to be as diligent as your targets in figuring that out, uh, because you'd rather him if he's going to end up elsewhere. You'd rather it happen now than in the, in the portal a year from now, in my opinion. Uh, so I do think that's something that, as a Wisconsin fan, you should say, you know what, look at it. You know, if you want to take mm-hmm. a visit, take the visit and, and see where you stand. Um, because otherwise it could be something that lingers after an enrollment and now with the portal and all this fluidity that's available, it could on, on the other side make kids say, well, I always wanted to visit that school and now they want me or they still want me. You know, how does that factor in? So you, you'd almost rather him go through whatever diligence he needs to as, as a high school senior as opposed to a, a 21-year-old with potentially other agendas or motivations. Yeah, and that, that's a great point in terms of, having the guy find the right fit the first time through and not having it linger. Um, all right, guys, coming up with uh, John Garcia, we're going to stay on the recruiting track. We have another uh, prospect that committed since we last talked to John. I think he's a bit of a high floor guy as well. I'm curious on John's opinion there. Uh, first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, we talked about it in the in the jump of the show. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your betting needs, sports information, latest odds, player props, futures. This is a great spot if you have a good feel or good early feel on the NFL, right? Bengals, you get really good value there. It was plus 1,100 last time I saw it to win the AFC. That's a team that would just have to repeat to fulfill that for you. You know, it's a lot of fun if you have five, 10 bucks, join up, talk to a friend, put some money on, and, and just let it ride and enjoy the process. Bet Online is a great, easy to use website. Also, has all your online Vegas games, blackjack, uh, roulette, everything there, um, and sports information and news as well. It's not just a betting site. You can go there to get podcasts, newsletters on the latest sports news and information. Head to the website today. It is not just about uh, sports betting, as I said. There's Vegas games. There's sports news. It is a all-in-one site, and they've really worked to build a community there. Uh, we use it at Locked On. I use it all the time. I did lose a little bit of money on the Bucks and the Suns, neither of which fulfilled my my. My hopes and dreams there, but uh, now I'm in on um, I'm in on the Sixer or not the Sixer, so I'm in on the Heat and Jimmy Butler. So a lot of fun. You can keep playing. Head to the website today. Um, use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. After you're done here, head over to uh, Lockdown NBA Big Board, which is uh, hosted by Rafael Barlow, who is also the NBA Draft Junkies guy. Incredible insight into the NBA Draft. The lottery just happened. Johnny Davis is going to be jumping from Wisconsin this year. We've talked about it a ton. Great insight over there. So head over there after you listen to us. And we're going to get back on with John Garcia, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director. Um, John, we have another prospect we wanted to talk about. Uh, We talked about Keys a little bit. But Justin Taylor also popped for the Badgers since we've last talked. You know, kind of um, an under, I, I would say, not a highly, highly known prospect at the time, uh, an athlete coming in. Um, what do you think of his film and, and what position does he project best at? Yeah, I think that's what's the, the question here, right? 6'2", 180 or so. You could really make the argument that, hey, this is a free safety or, hey, this is a boundary wide receiver with, with great ball skills. Uh, and those translate to, to each side of the football. Uh, he's certainly got more experience on the offensive side of the ball. But but look, it's high school, man. These high school coaches want to win. Mm-hmm. So if I have an athlete like that, I'm probably trotting him out at wide receiver as well. Um, but that's really what stood out to me was, was the ball skills, kind of the natural ability to track the football, something that, you know, we associate with the wide receiver position a little bit more. He, he looks like he's got good speed. Um, but, man, with that, with that potential ball skills at his back, you just wonder, man, what about free safety? Uh, I think with the frame, with his instincts that we saw with a little bit of available tape on defense, I do think 
it probably points to that side of the ball more. I know there's a big need at safety as well. I know we've talked about them importing mm-hmm. a lot of safeties through the portal. Uh, so developing one, I think, would be a nice counter to that down the line. So I'm inclined to say probably put him at free safety, uh, especially with Jim Leonard there. I think that's just a great fit, a kid who can develop. Uh, but it might take a little bit of time, right, because we don't see a ton of experience on that side of the ball at the high school level. Um, so if, if I'm going floor, I'm probably going wide receiver, but ceiling down the line, development, you know, put him at safety. I think there's more value there. I think he could become one with great range and be kind of that classic center fielder. It's, it's kind of the counterpoint of what we talked about earlier with Keys and, and the, hey, there's still a need for the classic back, but the game is moving elsewhere. So if the game keeps moving in that direction, which, I mean, there's no end in sight right now, all things even, you go towards combating or enhancing that part uh, of of your team. So I, I think you could still make the argument for either position, uh, but for me, there's more value in him being a, a potential free safety uh, or a zone corner, depending on how good mm-hmm. his hips are, which we don't get a great sense of. I think he could be a longer zone corner potentially down the line as well. So uh, curious to see how this one develops uh, and what position Wisconsin is recruiting him at. Yeah, so it sounds like, and these things are always a little fluid, but it sounds like Wisconsin's bringing him in. They're they are taking John's advice here. They're bringing him in as a safety. It's funny. I watched the film, and I had the same kind of interpretation you did, but I went a different way with it. I, I, the ball skills there, a ton of back shoulder throws, you know, slot fades, you know, where he's really going up, tra- like you said, tracking the ball, hand catching, not, not hauling it in with his body, juggling it around. And I instantly thought, much to your point, I said, I think he, this is a high floor receiver recruit. Like, you know, it's, you know, every high school kid has some volatility to it. So that's where I went with it. I'm like, oh, this guy's going to be a receiver. But your point's really interesting. If you have kind of a, a guy with great natural hands, the ability to track the ball, and you put him at free safety, maybe you get more of a disruptive presence there. So I, it's really interesting that you went – because I agree with your take. I just took it a different way. But uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, I think if it was just a hands thing and, uh, hey, he wins at the catch point – you could easily build the wide receiver argument, but I think how he tracks the ball is where you start to say, what Mm -hmm. about defense? Because now you're talking about a kid who's breaking on the football, who is taking the right risks. And that's where instincts come in as well. And we all know great DBs always have great instincts on top of that. So I think that's where you just kind of flirt with that side of, of the projection more, but it is fluid. You know, if he, uh, what if he bulks up and becomes this, this physical player in addition to having some of these skills. And now you say, man, I really covet that at the wide receiver position because now he could help my blocking game and the run game. Uh, and he, be- he could become that red zone option. Maybe he gets taller. That's, that's the other side of it. Right. I mean, cause he's already what six, two, mm-hmm. if he, if he shoots up more, you might, you might have grown out of the safety position, especially in how it's currently constructed and what, with what Wisconsin wants to do, with some of those players. So it really could work both ways. Uh, he's still got a whole nother year of high school ahead of him. Uh, so it, he could grow out of the safety spot, but as he's currently built and what we saw with the available 2021 video, I just think the range and ball tracking ability pushes me a little bit more towards instincts and defense overall. And this is a guy, like you said, I thought you made another really good point with the comparison to keys. This is a guy that's more on the opposite end. This is more of a physical projection guy, good athlete, good size for the position, but he needs to add 10, 20 pounds. He's, he's probably going to have to continue working on his body. Is this a guy for the industry? And when I say industry, I mean the recruiting industry, you're worth Sports Illustrated right now. Um, not a guy that had a lot of recruiting hype. Are we waiting on some track time, some more film to see really how fast he is? Because watching his film, he looks to me, and I, this is an amateur scouting, you know, armchair GM here. It looked like he's a little slow in and out of his, his start and stop. But I think the long speed seems there. So are we just kind of waiting on more data points here? Yeah, I think so. And he's a strider, like you mentioned, uh, which, which again, pushes to me a little bit more towards defense uh, and, and mm-hmm. some zone concepts where you can you can hide a little bit of maybe a lack of twitch. Um, and, and I think that goes against his route running as well, which pushes the projection further. But yeah, I mean, this is a kid who, who wasn't a, a three or four year recruit that everybody's known about. Um, he does come from good competition. You know, I've scouted multiple kids in that in that Chicago area where, where they, uh, you know, play big time ball relative to the region. Uh, so I do think that there's the opportunity to continue to be scouted. And, and yeah, if he could supplement that with 
some track times and and you know some other you know non football stuff that could help uh, in, in the industry's eyes. Um, but I think the commitment is doing that already. I think that's where you kind of take a closer look because now it's a commitment and and there's a bit more finality around his recruitment. So let's focus more on the kid's game in, in this uh, in this regard. So I think it's probably going to move up. I do think there's a lot of natural ability there. Uh, so if he could begin to supplement that over the next six or seven months, I think he could you know, fall forward, if you will, relative to, to where he's ranked right now. Again, it's it's very early. Um, mm-hmm. That that part of the country is, look, it's colder. There's less events out there uh, this time of year. So as that begins to change here soon, I think there's more opportunity to be seen and uh, potentially to adjust uh, whatever the initial impression was. Hey, guys, coming up, we have uh, one more topic we're going to get into quickly. Uh, a new recruit, a couple new quarterbacks have jumped on. We're specifically going to talk about a high school one that might be shaping up to be a Gophers-Badgers battle. Please, goodness gracious, don't let us lose them to Minnesota. Uh, all that and more with John Garcia coming up really quick after a word from our sponsor. Uh, Bill Barr is remains uh, one of the, the best friends and sponsors of the show. It's developed a great community around, uh, around Locked On. We all use it. It's something I've talked about a bunch. I've got two more boxes coming. This is the nutritional supplement you're going to want to use to help you stay in shape, to get in shape. Your body is going to keep wanting it more because it feels good when you eat it. It tastes good. There's no lasting, you know, when you eat a candy bar, how you feel sluggish and kind of guilty about it. Built Bar is nutrition. It's protein. It's healthy. 17 to 20 grams, 130, 150, 170 calories. Everything's 100% pure chocolate. You're not going to want to miss out on this. Um, go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order at built.com. We're going to bring John back on quickly, uh, jump back into the quarterbacks here. John, primarily, I wanted to talk to you about a quarterback that recently came onto the, the radar. Wisconsin offered him uh, Lincoln Kineholtz out of uh, South Dakota, 6'3, 185 pounds. Couple big, couple Big Ten offers. Illinois, Minnesota. What do you see on film, and and where are we at as far as you know in his recruitment? Lincoln's one of those kids, Ryan, where you're just glad that some of the pandemic influence restrictions are no longer in place. Because who in the world would be digging into South Dakota high school football uh, and athletes? Um, you know, you, you you watch the tape, you see the production, and you're like, this is a legitimate dual threat who who lit it up in 2021 and then you look further you're like oh he plays basketball oh he plays baseball Mm -hmm. oh there's a lot here so now these coaches can go see him they can hit the road and go see him and a lot of coaching staffs that have made that trek up to sd are offering him shortly Mm -hmm. thereafter wisconsin included minnesota included as you mentioned it could be another battle uh, between those two illinois had had offered recently as well i think he's going to continue to potentially uh, rack them up as time goes on and some of these other national quarterback dominoes settle, but look, he's 6'3", 190, a good athlete. He can deliver from multiple arm angles, as you would expect a baseball player uh, to do. He's comfortable off script. He's confident in, in his game and in the pocket. You know, he's a kid that'll step up and take a hit or avoid that initial rush with relative ease to keep his eyes down the field. But when he does take off, he can do some things with it as well. So Lincoln becomes a, a very interesting recruit. Um, there's not a lot of legitimate dual threats in this class for whatever reason. A lot of pocket guys, a lot of conventional quarterbacks. So when you can be a little bit more off script, uh, I do think in this scenario, you have a little bit more value because there's not 10 or 20 guys that are monster runners at the quarterback position. I don't know how many, you know, rush for a thousand yards like he did. Like I, off the top of my head, I know Avery Johnson did from out in Kansas, maybe another guy or two nationally that's being recruited, but there's not a whole lot. You know, this is a very pocket friendly quarterback class. So when you offer a counter to that, you have the chance to blow up in relatively short order. And that's what we're seeing here with, uh, with Mr. Lincoln. And he looks like a guy who, from what I saw, he he's comfortable throwing first and then running as an alternative. He looks like a pocket passer that can run, which is, is, I think, I think that's the pinnacle what you're looking for. Yeah, and these guys, look, they'll tell you, look, yes, I can run. Yes, I'm an athlete, but I need to prove that I am a quarterback that just happens to be a little bit twitchy with with some running ability. So that's what you want. Um, I think we, you know, we get crazy with these labels, right, dual threat and all that. Um, but, hey, it's it's also coveted on the other side. Like I was talking to Arch Manning, speed trainer. He's like, yeah, Arch came in like, hey, I want to work with you. I want to be known as a dual threat. It's not going to happen, Arch. Good luck. But. You know, he's working towards 
showing more mobility, right. showing more uh, ability to track it outside of the pocket. Uh, so I do think on the other side, these dual threats are like, hey, I'm a quarterback. Like, don't put me at, at dual threat or I'm going to be a receiver down the line or a safety. Uh, don't Eric crouch me in this thing. Uh, I'm a quarterback first. And I think with Lincoln, you see it. You see a lot of arm talent. The motion is really condensed which makes the release a little bit quicker as well uh, even when he does drop his arm angle a little bit so i do think he's got a plenty of, of reasons to think that he's going to be a legitimate power five uh, quarterback recruit and, and those are some of the things we see on tape and now um everyone's validating that when they go see him in person and it's resulting in, in quite the quite the little run and in the year of the quarterback you almost didn't expect a few to go on a bit of a run like this and we're seeing it in different parts of the country and, and i think when it comes to that athletic recruit you know he's one of the top few that that we're starting to see hey john as always man uh we appreciate your time i always run out of questions before or run out of time before we run out of questions this is true again um get you out of here really quick on this where can people find you where can they follow you um really appreciate it man yeah, uh, si.com slash college, real simple there. Uh, and on social, it's just my name, John Garcia underscore JR. He is John Garcia, guys. We strive to have him on as much as possible. Uh, John, thank you so much, man. We'll talk again soon. Sounds good, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. All right, guys, that is John Garcia once again. Uh, an honor and a privilege to have him on the show. You know, a couple of things he talked about that I really wanted to just wrap up quickly. Uh, and we ran a little short on time, and I apologize for that because I wanted to get into a few more things. But uh, his takes on Lincoln Kineholtz is really, really true in that this is a guy who is a dual threat, but really in today's in today's landscape, he's a pocket passer that can run. I think he would be a big, big time get for Wisconsin. I I hope they can close a the deal there. Currently, the offer list for Lincoln it's it's manageable. It's a doable offer list. If more schools keep getting involved, it gets a little tricky. So the quicker the Badgers can hopefully get traction in this class the quicker they can potentially uh gain an upper hand before uh, you know i don't know other blue bloods jump in um i think this is a kid that could blow up he kind of reminds me a little bit just watching film of like a zach wilson type you know a good arm a snappy arm a quick release he moves well he throws from a bunch of different angles i like him a lot and i think he could be a big time addition to the quarterback room at wisconsin and it would be a ceiling raiser and that's what we've been talking about for a long time. You've got to get somebody in there that raises the ceiling of the program. Um, and I think that could be Lincoln. Th that being said, guys, I uh, really appreciate everybody tuning in. We love having John on the show. Uh, we'll continue to do it. we got more good guests coming up, more guys that you aren't going to want to miss. Dylan Graff is coming up on the show. Uh, we have a former basketball player come up on the show. Um, a couple coaches coming up on the show. So please continue to stay tuned. We are almost at 100 subscribers on YouTube. Guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. I am like humbled beyond measure to help kind of as we build this community, guys. So uh, leave comments, like the show if you like it, you know, leave a review, subscribe. Um, it's all very appreciated. And until next time, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. And we will talk to you soon.